Today I'm going to walk through the install process of a Skyjacker 2 inch lift on a 2016 Toyota 4Runner. So as I said this is a 2016 Toyota 4Runner and this is a two wheel drive model and I will just be installing a spacer lift on this and the reason we're installing just a spacer lift and not the full uh, suspension like full suspension kit like I would prefer to do uh, is with the spacer lift he's, he's really not going to be going off-road since it's just a uh, since it's just a two-wheel drive uh, mine's four-wheel drive that's why I did all the suspension upgrades and everything on mine but with this uh, this is just a spacer lift and then just going over all of the uh, all the the parts that I have laid out here along with I've, I've already laid out some of my tools that's what's that's what's out here and then to lift it I'm actually going to be using his factory jack and then my factory jack because uh, somebody ended up losing my floor jack that I had the parts that are here that came from Skyjacker, so we have the two spacers. So these these are the two that go on the, the top of the front strut assembly. So what we're going to be doing is we're bolting this into the top and then threading the studs in, putting the nuts on top, and then these are the spacers for the rear. So this didn't come with replacement coil springs that are taller than the factory ones. It just came with spacers to sit on that. And since this is this is two wheel drive and he's not going to be taking it off road, it'll just be strictly on road. Uh, it. He said he's okay with going with this. Um, still, if it were me, I would go with a, a full suspension setup, but uh, this is this still works, um, especially if you're not off-roading and you're not going to be doing a lot of crazy angles and you're just going over little bumps and potholes here and there, maybe a curve or two. And then this is just a thread locker, uh, so if you want to put that on just for added uh, security on like whenever you bolt in these, it'll, it'll lock the threads in. The basic tools that I've already laid out, have the uh this is just my my breaker bar with the, the socket for the lug nuts and then i've got my two ratchets out um, a few 14 millimeters because uh, i know that the nuts on top of the, the strut assembly they're 14 millimeter so i've laid out a few 14 millimeters some tins because I, I have to remove the uh the guard on the bottom the wind tray uh, so i've got 10 millimeter extension all that and then i've laid out my 19 millimeter uh deep and shallow okay now i will be time lapsing a lot of this uh, while I'm going through that, lifting it, I'm going to remove the front wheels completely, the back wheels. I can leave those on while I'm doing this. Um, uh, but the front wheels, we've already loosened all the lug nuts and they'll be uh, they'll be taken off so I can have access to the uh, the strut assembly. And then just looking at the bottom, we're going to have to take off this metal guard to get access to the, uh, the bolt that goes into the lower control arm. Because we're going to have to loosen the lower control arm and drop that a bit so that we can get the taller, uh, the taller shock assembly in once that spacer is added to the top. But we're setting up the camera for some time lapse so you can just follow through and just watch the more high speed uh, version of me taking everything apart and replacing everything and then stopping here and there to discuss what I'm doing. So whenever this is lifted we should expect a couple inches on the front and also a couple inches on the back. I've got it sitting on my, uh, on my jack stand uh, but make sure before you begin you chalk up your tires. So things that I have to remove um, I'm going to loosen up this 10 millimeter bracket here because on my FJ Cruiser, whenever I installed everything, this was actually pulling a little bit. Uh, but then I replaced my uh, my upper control arm also. We're going to pull this out, and I'm probably going to have to loosen the uh, control arm sway bar. Uh, but I've got to loosen this. Is I do not have to loosen that uh, that adjuster nut in the middle. So there's a four 14 millimeter nuts and then the two 19 millimeter nuts on the bottom then I will loosen the lower control arm just to make it easier um, and all I'll be doing is loosening it from where it mounts into the frame on the front there and on the back here so these front two 10 millimeter and so they have a plastic snap right here pop out and then these back two are 12 millimeter. I will also have to grab a pickle fork um, and then shove it in between here and then hammer a little bit just to separate this ball joint that's in the upper control arm from the spindle uh, spindle assembly. 
down here. So I'll have to loosen this castle nut and then take out this cotter pin. And I might have to loosen the, uh, the sway bar here and then drop that just to get that out of the way. I think I had to do that when I installed the FJ Cruiser one. 14 millimeter nuts on top and then it's just loosening these and dropping it down. Once I separate this, um, I'll be able to to lower the lower the control arm and then take the, uh, the shock out, the shock assembly out of the strut assembly out of here. And I'm just using this 10 millimeter bracket up here so that the brake line doesn't get pulled whenever I separate this from this. And this is a 12 millimeter on this bracket here. You'll want some kind of a wire hanger uh, to hold this because this will try to fall all the way forward. So you'll need something just to hook in here and attach up here. I have some bungee, some bungee straps that work really well. If you have somebody to hold it for you, then that works too. Don't bend this brake line whenever you remove this bracket. It's a metal brake line here and it's rubber after. Uh, the rubber part, it doesn't matter if you bend it around, but the metal, you don't want to bend it around too much. So now I'm going to loosen these bottom two. So there's a, there's a nut here that goes on the front and there's a bolt that goes on the back. Uh, they're both 19 millimeter. And then there's 14 millimeter nuts up here on top. I'll loosen those. So I'll loosen those before I split this. And I did loosen the sway bar from the other side. So that's how it was able to drop this far. If the other side wasn't loose, then I wouldn't be able to drop it like that. So this 19 millimeter nut doesn't have a washer attached to it on the bottom. It doesn't have a little flange that hangs off. It's got a, a separate washer that will be loose. You'll need that for reassembly. For this, I had accidentally paused the video, but I just used my pickle fork, wedged it in, and then just hammered the back end with my mini sledge, but wedged it apart, and then it, uh, it popped loose. Pretty simple. And loosening the nuts for the lower control arm, uh, the nuts and the bolts are all 22 millimeters. So if you want to loosen that, it will be far easier to get this out and to also get it back in. Um, and I'm remembering from mine, my FJ Cruiser's four wheel drive, so I have a drive shaft that goes into the front spindle. So I had to remove this, the sway bar. So if yours is four wheel drive and you're following this video, then uh, then you will have to remove that. But on this, I should be able just to take this out and swing it out this way. Uh, where I couldn't do that with mine because I had a drive shaft that was in the way. But since this is two wheel drive, the drive shaft's not in the way and I should be able to just to remove this and slide it out. But I'm gonna loosen the lower control arm just to make this a little bit easier and slide this out, put the spacer in and then uh, do the other side. Having a little trouble getting to the nut on the back of this. So I'm going to loosen this up from the front side. Now obviously whenever the front is lifted, the alignment has to be redone. Um, but for sure, whenever these bolts are touched on the lower control arm, uh, the alignment will have to be redone. So a deep socket is too tall to get onto this onto this nut because as you loosen it, it'll push against the inside of the fender. And a shallow socket is it's too shallow so that you can't get all the way down and cover the full surface area around this nut. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little double wrench setup. So I've got a 14 millimeter and then just another wrench that I'm putting on the end. most difficult one is going to be this back one and make it a little bit quicker I have my ratchet wrench here oh, but since I, I loosen the lower control arm this makes it easy just to pull this bolt out because there's no pressure between here and the lower control arm just a little note on putting this back in. Depending on what your kit is, like I have OME struts, ARB 90,000 series struts on my, uh, on my FJ Cruiser and the studs coming out the top are taller than what they should be so I had to bend this piece of the fender back just a little bit to allow me some clearance but what you can do is slide the stud up just a little bit to where it's just peeking through 
and put the nut on and then tighten the nut so that it pulls up and then uh, the stud would butt all the way up against the bottom of this fender. Just lifting up on the whole strut assembly and I'm sliding this bolt out of the bottom before I loosen the nut. Again, if, this is the, if you have the four-wheel drive model and you're trying to follow this, that would not be as easy because you have a drive shaft that goes through the middle of the spindle. Here's the whole stock assembly as we pulled it off the 4Runner. Uh, nothing's changed, nothing's unbolted. This is exactly how it comes off of the vehicle. I'm gonna do, so this is the spacer. Uh, again, this is a Skyjacker. Uh, the Skyjacker 2-inch kit. Link's in the description. So, that goes there. It's the factory nut. You can screw it on the, on the inside. And you want to tighten these down before you put it back on because once you slide this in the strut tower, you won't be able to tighten this down. So you'll need a 14 millimeter deep socket to tighten this. Okay, now obviously since uh, whenever you put these 14 millimeter nuts on and you hold the spacer in, the spacer is gonna go underneath the strut tower and you will not be able to retighten these 14, 14 millimeters. It's gonna be the main thing that I use this thread sealer on. This thread sealer locks the nut in place I'm just gonna put a little dab on there, the nut will spread it out. The assembly with the spacer ready to go in so I'm just sliding in the bottom. I'm going to put the top in first and then I was looking at the mount hole in the bottom. I just want to make sure that's lined up because there's three different angles that you can place this. And I have my nut here. I'm just going to slide this up. Screw on the nut. So now that's held in place and I can put that lower bolt back in. And this was the nut and the washer off of it. Okay. I'm just going to move this lower piece around to get this Eyelet in the bottom goes through. So slid that bolt through, washer, and then the nut. So those are in place. Now what you can do is you can put a, uh, a jack underneath and then jack up the lower control arm so that it pushes it up. Or if you and a friend wanted to try to lift it up into place, uh, just until those you have enough room for the studs where you can grab those with a socket or a wrench. Now the, the studs that are on top of this, on this one, there's a hole directly above this stud that comes out of the strut, so you don't have to grind this one down, but the other ones, uh, I think like the ones in the back, I think there might have been one other hole, but the, the very, very top of the stud where it comes to a point, that's got to be grinded down a little bit just so that uh, just so that this sits flush. Now you can shoot ground down all three if you're grinding down any of them, but it doesn't have to be ground down to where the threads begin, but just where the point comes off, but that's just so that this sits uh, snugly inside. With the, the struts, I really do like how this is a black spacer instead of a silver spacer because you can look inside and you can hardly see it. Now the wheels, these wheels are going to tuck in a little bit more on the bottom than they are on top because uh, the upper control arm wasn't replaced like it was on mine. So if you do want to replace that so that your wheels sit more vertical, then this is the, uh, this is the upper control arm. It's not that hard to replace. I've got a video on replacing mine and it is the same process that you would go through to replace it on the 4Runner. So. Uh, this is not too difficult and then moving down here so what i've done so far is i've lifted up the bottle jack to the point to where the wheels are just barely coming off the ground and i set them back down just to where they're just barely on the ground that way i can loosen the shocks and then lift up the vehicle some more so that i can take the springs off of the top of the axle and then after that i'm going to put the spacers in the top and then set everything back down gently. I shouldn't have to unbolt any of the, the track bars or any of that setup. The spare tire might be in the way. I might have to remove that, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be too much. Okay, so this is a 17 millimeter, this bolt that goes in through the bottom of the, the shock. For now it is important when you're putting this back that you want to torque it back to the factory specifications. I'm just loosening it with my breaker bar just because it's easier. I'm not prying on the bottom part of the cartridge, I guess. I'm prying more on the bottom, closer to where the grommet is. Alright, just had to lower it a little bit to get some weight off of the, 
off of this. So now I'm going to do the other side. Alright, so that's off. I've removed one spring and I lifted it up a little bit. I readjusted my jacks. I'm just removing the other one. So this is doable, but it will be easier if the, uh, the torsion bars are loosened up. I'm just removing this rear sway bar uh, so it'll free a little bit more room. It's a 14 millimeter. So the spring with the spacer was a little bit too tall without loosening the uh, so the the track bar. What I ended up doing is I ended up loosening the uh, the sway bar in the front on the other side of the axle, and that allowed me to drop it about another inch or so but I still couldn't get the spring with the spacer in so what I've done now is got my spring clamps and clamped down the spring just a little bit just to give me a little bit of room and I you see I got it in there I just have to put my ratchet on it and loosen it back out I've got these facing down so I wouldn't have been able to get my ratchet on uh, the way that it was before and these were also pushing on the on the axle but right now I'm just gonna loosen this back hopefully we'll be all done with this side. I'll just have to uh, clamp the spring on the other side and then loosen it up. The spacer is in. It's in place. Uh, again, this is a spacer, it's not for off-roading. Uh, but this one is in, I just gotta work on the other side. Okay, I've got the spacers in and I've got the vehicle lowered on top of the springs with the spacers. Uh, looks like everything is in place and I can start playing with the bottle jacks, lowering them uh, to get to them, get them down to the lower, to where they need to be, so that I can slide the shocks back on, and also connect back to the, uh, this rear sway bar. Okay, so I've loosened the top of this, uh, the top of this shock, and I've also tightened down this sway bar. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to have my friend lift up the jack so that I can uh, slide this back into place. So go ahead and uh, and like raise it up. Okay, that's back on. I just have to put the bolt back through. All right, and now since I loosened the top of this this shock, I'm going to tighten the top of it back down. You can see you have a place here for uh, where they grind it off the top of the nut a little bit, so you can attach pliers or I don't know if that's about a 10 millimeter wrench size, something just to hold it in place. It just holds the threads in place while you're tightening this down. Now I'm not clamping the threads, I'm clamping the blank spot above the threads. Now obviously because of the location of this, you can't torque this back down. So just try to get it as tight as you can, because I can't put the torque wrench on it. So this is it after it's lifted, uh, two inch front and two inch rear lift, and it's a Skyjacker, it's their Skyjacker two inch lift for the two wheel drive four runners. I believe it would work also for the four wheel drive four runners. That I don't know. This is a two wheel drive four runner. You see how much difference it is uh, just compared to what it was before. Uh, there's a lot more space in the wheel well, the front and the rear wheel wells. So anyway, that's all for this video. Um, make sure you check out the other videos. I've got a lot of videos on the FJ Cruiser, on me lifting it. Um, and it's just all the stuff that I have done to it. There's, there's at least a dozen by now. Uh, so check out those videos if you wanna see more. If you wanna see more of how I lifted that one versus how I lifted this one, they had the same rear suspension. Uh, check out that video. In, in that one, I actually loosened all of the, all of the track bars and all of the, all of the bars and brackets that bolt into the, uh, the rear axle so that I could 
separate it completely from the vehicle and lift it out because I was doing it, uh, I think it's a two and a half inch lift on the rear of that one. On this one, um, I used my spring clamps and I actually clamped the spring, put the spacers on top, and then I was able to put the, uh, this, the spring clamps with this, uh, around the springs back on top of the rear axle and then decompress the spring. Yeah, there's enough room around the coil springs to get my spring clamps on and then to loosen them. But hey, if you, if you like this video, you want to see more like it, um, let me know what you think. Uh, give me ideas if you want to see me do things to this. I was actually thinking about upgrading my track bars on this one while I was working on this. Uh, just putting in more adjustable ones or something like that. So if you, uh, just let me know in the comments down below what you guys want to see. But uh, thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. And uh, God bless you guys.